And let's take a look at your Caribbean report for tonight. Trinidad and Tobago's reserve of natural gas has declined further. A report from the international audit company Ryder Scott said that proven reserves have fallen by 1 trillion cubic feet. In 2008, there were 12 trillion cubic feet, but since then, there had been no exploration for new supplies. Larry McCalfrey of Ryder Scott said that pursuing companies to invest in development would be difficult. Energy Minister Carolyn Sipersad Bashan said that the government is in the process of developing a tax reduction system to encourage investors to expand the hundreds of millions of dollars needed in investment. In Jamaica, three remaining state-owned sugar factories in Jamaica have been sold to a Chinese company, Complant, for an estimated $9 million U.S. While it is a small investment, Larry Brins, director of the Council of Hemispheric Affairs, said that this was part of China's increasing aggressiveness in terms of being a producer of goods. It's not a lot, but a lot of different things make up something significant, he said. China is also said to have made a deal to buy Jamaican coffee. Dominica has a new leader of opposition, Hector John, a 39-year-old information technology graduate. It is seen as a sign that the main opposition United Workers' Party will end their boycott of Parliament. Mr. John was elected to the House Assembly only last December, before being disbanded by the Speaker, along with other colleagues, for missing three sittings. And finally in Haiti, a UK charity known as Archive, Architecture for Health in Vulnerable Environments, has launched a global design competition to come up with healthy housing for Haiti. Archive believes that housing should not only take in the need for shelter, but be innovative and minimize the transmission of airborne diseases like tuberculosis. Dr. Ken Yang, the architect and one of the judges, said that improved natural circulation of air would create a better quality of life. They believe that by next July, the homes will will be ready for occupants. And that's your Caribbean report for tonight. And the Seventh-day Adventist Church is holding a day of caring on St. Croix in order to create community building and education and more, as I spent some time with Pastor Wilmoth James, who you might remember as being one of the interviewees on the special series called Answers and Solution. Well, and the basic needs of life is food, shelter, and of course, love. And I'm here with Pastor Wilmoth James of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and he's got a decree of making the seventh day of August a day of caring. Pastor, tell us a little bit about what you've got planned for the community building effort that you're doing. Um, we are delighted that uh, as um, part of our community here, um, we would have put aside the 7th of August as a day of care and concern for our community with the intent of um, bringing awareness to the community to be one and looking after our own needs and help us to provide the community with the safety and the morale and the dignity and a place of living that we all would like to see to be. Um, this would entail, um, in our plans as the church, we are closing the congregation those two um, that Saturday, and we will be joining hands with other agencies in the community, such as the Human Service Department, the um, HIV Department here of the Health um, Department. We're also going to be joining with the um, Red Cross and um, the Fire Department, along with the Police Department, and we are intended to go to the community to provide various um, educational tips and suggestions as to how we can live together. Uh, we are presently aware of the very challenges that each community face. And in this venture, we're hoping that the um, in-depth of education that we'll provide in the areas um, such as health care, um, the elderly, the youth, parenting, um, the social issues that affect our community, that we will begin to see us rising above these issues and bringing our community together. Yeah, we do need to rise above, particularly what we've seen in the last few weeks here. What brought on this uh, idea to do this event? Uh, basically, it's um, after being here with um, Channel 8 um, about a month or so ago and seeing the passion that um, the other administrators have in, in putting forth a more positive approach to community that would tend to curve the, the listeners' um, understanding of what community is all about. We decided that we will join hands with um, the media in, in going into the community and carrying this day of care and, and, and fellowship uh, with people of the community. And that's where it really stemmed from, um, originated by the, the 
positive approach that Channel H has taken in regards to bringing a media or, or news that is more positive to a community. Because we do know that once uh, it, it's a positive approach, people begin to think that way. That's the working of the man. What Pastor Williams is talking about is when we did the Answers and Solutions not so long ago, just a few weeks back, and you were a member of that of the of that show uh, and that event, and you had a very positive turnout from it. You got a lot of responses from it. A number of responses I've got from that, which I think is, uh, if we could continue for another period of time, we will begin to see that uh, it will make an uh, uh, at least an island-wide impact. Remember that um, the good will not always come quickly, but it runs deep but it will be lasting. And so carrying such on a program will be of great help to us. I'm excited about that. Now tell us a little bit about, uh, you say you're going to have a health screening, you're going to have uh, an HIV awareness seminar. Any other seminars that you're going to have there that uh, that will be of worth noting? Yeah, we're going to be dealing with the alcohol prevention, particularly on the age drinking problem. We have someone that's going to be addressing the young people that will gather at that session in regards to that. We'll be also having education in regards to diabetes, how to um, handle or treat persons with it and also to prevent it. Um, obesity, which is one of our chronic illness um, problems in our society. Uh, we have um, professionals going to be addressing these matters. Where exactly are you going to have the event at? And there's no charge to get in. I'm assuming it's going to be community. Everybody comes together, right? Where will it be held? Uh, it's going to be at um, number five, Bombiju. That's just the course from the um, Woodson School. I um, mean, the massive open pasture there. Um, we'll be setting up our headquarters there, and um, the, which will be open to many persons. We have a few um, doctors that's coming. There will be a one session at every hour. At 9 o'clock, we'll be having the session on diabetes. And uh, to those who would like to handle my doctor, um, Henry, then we have at um, 10 o'clock, we have that on obesity. At uh, 11 o'clock, we have Dr. Graham, uh, Graham, I think, who will be coming to deal with um, education to the senior men uh, in regards to the posture challenge that we face. And then at 12, we have um, on the age drinking, driving. And then at uh, 1, we'll be having um, parenting and teens, okay? We'll be dealing with the crime issues that, that we confront. And we have specialties in this area dealing with this. During that time, that whole morning session, we will be having the um, help of uh, hundreds of young people community and, and, and members of our church and other congregations who are going to be moving into the communities and providing care to the elderly and the seniors that sometimes do not get that tender care where they will bed to be made and are here to comb and, and maybe assist someone will be there showing that care to the community and at the same time give the invitation to those who we meet of the various sessions that are available in the communities um, that we will be targeting on this mission. I would like to point out that there are just a few communities we're targeting based on the area. Those include um, Mambiju, Tanjipani, um, Kalkuhun, Kobel, um, Nakusaneri, I think, and Area Dias. Um, those are the communities that specifically we are targeting, but we have extended to other persons across the island who have transportation that can come on down and uh, into that area and, and find the benefits of this program. And that's Saturday, the first Saturday of August, near Woodson School in Mombiju. Pastor William, thank you for coming out and doing this interview with us and letting us know. If there's any other information that uh, the people may want to get uh, to get to know and get in touch with you about, how can they do that? All right. Um, sure, we can um, reach contact by 340-642-0752. That's our head office. And also we have um, our secretariat staff that's going to help us with 340-643-7743. Um, and uh, 719-2510. I'm Jerome Ajian for Channel 8 News. Thanks, Pastor James. And that's the first Saturday of the month, August 7th. And we'll be coming back from this break. We'll take a look at your Sports 411 update as we look at some summer camps.